Hey there, I'm Bonnie Wiscombe, a life coach, mom, entrepreneur, and lover of helping moms find purpose to their life. So today we're gonna to talk about finding the perfect working mom schedule. Let me just rephrase that. There is no perfect working mom schedule, but if you're a working mom, then you know that keeping track of your day-to-day -day tasks, keeping yourself on track all day is crucial for making sure that everything gets done on your never-ending to-do list. Now let's just remember first off that how we think about our days and our never-ending to-do list makes a big difference in how we actually show up for our day. Thoughts that we like to repeat like, I'm so overwhelmed, there's so much to do, I do everything around here, all thoughts I'm guilty of thinking and actually speaking aloud tend to be less helpful for us because they create feelings like frustration, anxiety, stress, those sorts of things. If you like to sit in those feelings, keep thinking those thoughts. If not, I'm gonna offer you a couple new ones that can help us in the future. Now to start off, let me just say that I believe every mom is a working mom, but specifically I'm talking about those of us who have something that we put our time and energy towards that goes outside of our home. So like a work project, a service project, something on the internet, something that puts some impact out into the world, right? So as a working mom, one of the first things I need to do to ensure that my day runs smoothly is take care of my nighttime routine. That sounds sometimes a little counterintuitive to think about the evening bedtime routine before we even talk about the daytime, but let me tell you why this matters. How I decompress or don't the night before and the amount of rest I get directly impacts how I show up the next day for my kids, for my business, for my husband, for everything. So when my evening routines are off, due to travel, due to illness, due to me just being lazy and wanting to watch Netflix half the night, the next day is also thrown off. And it doesn't mean we can't think more positively, more energetically, feel motivated when we have those bad nights. It's just a lot harder. And so I like to make things as easy on myself as possible. That starts with a good evening routine. So what does that look like? It's gonna to be totally dependent on your life situation, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what mine looks like. First of all, a perfect evening for me begins with shutting off screens several hours before bedtime. I have noticed a direct correlation between how much screen time I get right before bed and how well I sleep. And for me, as I get older, I tend to sleep less and less well and it gets harder and harder to get myself to sleep, especially if there's been screens. So I try to shut it off a couple hours before bed. That includes work. It's so hard for me to shut down when I'm feeling productive, which I often do while doing work. So shutting that off early, preferably before dinner time, is really, really helpful for me. After that, I like to get in my pajamas kind of early. I like to spend some quiet time by myself or with my husband after the kids have gone to bed. Because caring for my children is such a big part of my life, it takes up a lot of energy and time. And when my kids are still awake, I find it difficult for me to enter into that fully restful state in my brain until they're off to bed. You probably feel similar. So once kids are in bed, I get a little bit of quiet time by myself or with my husband. And then I usually like to wrap the night up with a good book or something, something that allows my brain to relax without stimulating it with blue light. Um, and then at least seven hours of sleep, preferably eight or even nine. I need a ton of sleep I've noticed over the years. And when I get it, I feel amazing. When I don't, less so. All right, so after that ideal evening routine, then we get to the morning routine. My morning routine, I will admit, probably doesn't look like a lot of productive people's morning routine, simply because I've got a lot of kids and I need a lot of sleep. So I don't usually wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Could I get a million more things done if I woke up at five o'clock in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. But in order to do that and still take care of my own body, I would have to get to bed way earlier and then give up some of that precious alone time or time with my husband and give up some of that time talking with my teenagers, which usually comes later at night. So this is just an adjustment I've made for myself. I generally wake up between 6.30 or 7.30 in the morning, depending on how much sleep I've had. And then I get dressed, I brush my teeth, get dressed for the gym or for running. I work out four to five times a week if life is going the way it should, and it is really, really beneficial to my mental health and my physical health, obviously. So I go to the gym, I go run, I come back, and then I help finish taking care of uh, breakfast for kids. Um, if the big kids haven't helped with that, we help change babies, anything else that needs to get done. I shower myself, and then we help out with schoolwork during the rest of the morning. Now we do have a tutor because we homeschool and she has been a huge, huge, huge boon to our family. But I am also still needed here and there for schoolwork and then all the rest of the stuff that has to happen in the house, the laundry and the pickup and the taking care of the babies, often doctor's appointments, papers to fill out, insurance calls to make, you get it, the running of a household, right? The other thing that is a little bit more flexible in my morning is my scripture routine. So I always pray when I first wake up, but my scriptures take a little bit more time, and so I usually just insert them whenever I have a few minutes during the morning when someone doesn't need me. That's not my ideal. Ideally, I would like to do it probably first thing after I wake up or right after a workout when my brain is functioning again, um, but that doesn't always happen. So this is what we've got right now, and it works really well for me. 
let me just say this if you are not a homeschooler and you have to get yourself up really early and get kids out the door your morning routine will probably be a little bit more pressed for time and you won't have as much um, ability to stretch things out as I do I will say this though make sure you know what your top two or three things are that you will do every morning to make you feel really productive and ready to hit the day maybe it's exercise maybe it's meditation maybe it's taking a walk whatever that might be do your best to fit it in because when that morning gets off to a good start you're so much more productive the rest of the day that's what I've noticed for me okay so let's move into work time so if you work from home what a blessing right you can really set up shop for work anywhere, the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom if you want. But what I've noticed is that when I have a dedicated space that I go to every single day, it kind of signals to my brain, hey, work time, time to settle down. If I'm on the computer, I'm less uh, distractible because I know I shouldn't be paying bills or budgeting or shopping for a new dress, I should be working, right? If I wanna take a break, sometimes I will even take my phone or my laptop to the dining table to look up something for fun while I'm eating my lunch, but I know that it's not work time because I'm not at my desk. Just a little tip. Now, another wonderful planning tip is the first hour of your workday to make sure that you have all of your to-dos slotted into your calendar. So what does that look like? All right, the first hour of my work week is 1 p.m. on Monday, because I start work at about one o'clock. At 1 p.m., I take my to-do list, things that have popped in my head over the weekend, things that I've scribbled on my planner from the week before that I didn't get to, and I write them all out on my planner at the top of my to-do list, right? And then I take each one and I slot it into a specific place on my calendar. The way I do this is that I've actually categorized each of my days. So I have the flexibility where I can get things done pretty much whenever I want to because I work for myself. So on Mondays, I generally create an outline for the podcast. I'll do some video editing. On Tuesday, I record my podcast and maybe I'll do some brainstorming for the blog. On Wednesday, you see. So there's a category and a type of task that I do each day. And when I look at my list, I just slot them in wherever that day calls for it, right? Sometimes this requires some moving around. I'll have an appointment or something come up. We go on vacation. I have more work to do on a different day than usual, and I can be flexible, but having that basic structure to my week has been so helpful. And when Wednesday rolls around at 1 p.m., I sit down at my desk and I don't have to ask myself, what do I want to do? What should I do? What has to get done by Thursday? I've already slotted it all out and I know exactly what I need to do. I, I save so much more brain power and energy and I actually require myself to do things that I don't want to do when they're required to be done because I'm not asking myself, what am I in the mood for? Does that make sense? Just taking that general idea about putting your to-do list on, on paper first hour of the week, slotting them in throughout the rest of the week will make a huge difference. Okay, the last thing I wanna say about my work day is that I usually end around 4.35. Now, if I allow myself to get carried away with work, I will work past that and it very often negatively influences our dinner time routine. So dinner time is one thing that is non-negotiable for me. We always get together for dinner as a family and eat together. Now with teens and busy schedules, not everyone is there every single night of the week, but me and my husband are there every single night of the week and I do my best to make a decent dinner every single night of the week or recruit a child's help to do that. So for me, one of my biggest challenges during my workday is stopping work right at five o'clock and saying, oh, now it's family time. Um, if I can pay attention to the clock around 4.30, I'll think, okay, I have time for like one more email or I have time to do this one other little task before it's time to wrap it up. If not, I find myself perpetually chasing that dopamine hit of done, check another task off the list when really I should be spending that time with my family. So just a little tip from someone who is totally addicted to productivity and can sometimes neglect relationships because of that addiction. So that's something that I've had to work on. Maybe you yourself is the opposite and would much rather play with your kids or eat dinner with them than actually get to work. And you get to, to kind of work out those struggles with yourself. But just notice when your brain gets into overwork mode or underwork mode and figure out how you can pull yourself out of that. So dinner time for us, like I mentioned many times, my kids help. We are on a rotation where my five big kids each has a night of the week where they help with dinner. That doesn't mean I'm off the hook, unfortunately. They don't have enough experience that they can do it completely on their own, except my oldest. Um, but we're getting there, and it's so helpful to have a buddy, especially if I do have a work task I have to finish up, and they're starting to brown the meat or whatever it might be. Then at about 6.30, my husband's home. We sit down to eat as a family. Um, in the evening, we read some scripture together. We put kids to bed, and that's the end of the day, right? Like I mentioned, if as long as I have gotten a good amount of work done during the day, it's very easy for me to transition into that nice evening routine where I get to relax. If I allow myself to be pulled back into my office, I can fall into that cycle of overwork. And that's just something that I get to work on, both on my thoughts and my actions. 
So just one final thought about managing our brains, like I mentioned earlier in this video, it is so important to pay attention to the stories our brains are telling us. So let me give you an example. I have my own business, a couple of them. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. However, I've noticed that if I allow my brain to run away with it itself, it will say things like, gosh, this is so much work. Ugh, why am I doing this? Ugh, I hate this. Not about my business in general, just about this one task that I've put on my plate, which is necessary for me to reach the goal that I have, right? If I can be on to my brain and pay attention and notice, oh, that's actually not true at all. I might really dislike this task that I'm doing right now, but this is essential for me to meet the goal that I've made for my business, which I love and really fulfills my, my life. Does that make sense? Let's take the dinner example. At five o'clock, sometimes I, I find my brain saying things like, ugh, it's time to get off the computer where I feel productive and useful and go into where the kids are screaming at each other and having fights. I gotta make some dinner they're probably not gonna eat and then we're all gonna fight over the dinner table, which is very likely, let's be honest. But if I can watch my brain and say, hey, 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 this is what I've chosen, to have this great big bunch of kids running around me so that we can feel love and joy and chaos and fighting and all of the good and bad that comes with it to make our entire lives feel more expansive, feel more joyful, right? Um, yes, dinner time is hard, but that's required. That's what I want to do to help my family feel more put together. Does that make sense? So all we're doing is just noticing when our brains kind of run away with ourselves. Sometimes it brings up emotions that we really almost like to feel kind of indulgent, like frustration. Oh, frustration is an indulgent emotion for me. I just think, oh, there those kids go fighting again. When instead I could just think, oh, look, part of getting along with your siblings includes fighting. There they go. They're gonna learn this. They're gonna figure it out eventually, right? So I hope some of that mindset work was helpful. I hope giving you a little bit of a peek into my daily schedule was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some tips for creating a great working mom schedule for yourself as well. Um, let me just say that if you do struggle with some of those thoughts that you find running away with yourself or you're just really struggling with getting your mind wrapped around how to balance all these things that are in your life, please schedule a free coaching call. I would love to talk to you. I do 20 minute free sessions for anyone who is interested so we can get to know each other a little bit. I'll help you through your problem just a little teeny bit, get a taste of what coaching is really like. And then if you're interested, you can schedule a full package of coaching calls, which is a four week session, super fun to do. We can make a ton of progress. I just love coaching, it's amazing. So you can do that in the description below. All right, friends, talk to you next week.